Hey guys, what's up? This is IPiano back for another episode of Starts With K, the Kerbal Space Program series. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna call it. Um, so, it's been a while since I released the last video of this series, although you probably don't know that because chances are good that you've seen them all at once because not many people are watching these as I release them. Anyway, in case it's been a while since you saw my last video, here's a quick reminder of what happened then. Okay, so now, time to get on with this episode. This episode, I'm going to be doing the Kerbini program. So, let's see the introduction. Over Kerbin, Kerbal-made stars could be seen gleaming from their orbits upon a treeless, empty world. It didn't matter because no one on Kerbin had ever seen a tree, so they weren't missed. Geosat proved the point that there was absolutely no vegetation at all on the planet, except the microscopic green stuff. Uh, scientists are currently trying to track down the elusive compound that made the surface that particular shade of green. It was also discovered, contrary to popular belief, that there was no actual there were actually no buildings except for the insular airfield and the Kerbiates Kerbal Space Center 2 beyond the Kerbican continent. As the Kerbal Space Center was one of the only buildings in all of Kerbica, the scientists found no lack of volunteers. The Kerbican president announced that he wanted to see a Kerbal on the moon by the end of the decade. The Kerbal space program set its sights on an eventual moon landing in return, although most scientists doubted the success of such. To get there, much, needed, much was needed to be learned. The volunteers were called up, but most Kerbals were not that eager to volunteer, even with the free snacks. Jebediah Kerman, a daredevil from Kernicopia, was the first and only volunteer for a while. Though after showing off his new spacesuit with a jetpack included, his very intrigued brothers Bill and Bob would soon join him, and it became apparent to Kerbal Space Program scientists that Jebediah's whole family had what it takes to get into space, a penchant for a good bribe and a lack of education. So, this episode, or section of the player campaign, is um, some practice at working with Orbals, or Orbals, Kerbals, in orbit, in space, and um, yeah, stuff stuff like that. So we've got uh, sp spacewalkers, jet-assisted EVAs, orbital rendezvous, etc. So that's what I got in this episode. So first up, we have a launch escape system. I have to create a launch escape system that can be used on rockets to pull the command pod away from the rest of the rocket if disaster strikes. Um, it must be able to land safely on the ground, duh, and it must be triggered by the abort action group, meaning the backspace key on the keyboard. So, let's get started with that. And, as per the instructions, I'm not required to use this until after the Kerbin Eye mission, however, it's probably a good idea to use it anyway, just because I don't want to kill Kerbals if things go wrong. So we're going to have the command pod as the base piece, and then we're going to have a separator underneath that, because if something goes wrong and we want to abort, we want to immediately detach the entire top part of the rocket and have it fly away. So what are we going to get? I'm going to throw on, I think, two parachutes just to be safe. <laughs> There's the parachutes. And there's already a launch escape system that, that can be used. However, um, this one is for the wrong size command module, so that's not going to work. Plus, I feel like it's a little big and excessive for what we need. So all we need now is a couple of small engines to pull this thing away. Uh, I'm going to go with the Cepatron 1 canisters. Uh, these are just little mini mini little uh, solid fuel boosters and the idea here is they'll just they've got a really short um, length that they can fire and uh, they'll all fire off and then it'll separate. And I think the idea is that everything gets activated at once by the uh, backspace key so I'm gonna leave them all in one command group here. And we're going to put a nose cone on the top. And I'm 
not going to take the time to test this out right now, but I, it will be used. It will be used. So I can save this as a custom part. Yes. Oh, that's a custom category. I don't want that. Subassembly, that's what I want. No, that, oh. Darn it, I was supposed to click there. Okay, let's build this again. Okay, so if something goes wrong during the launch, hopefully I can just activate this and fly away. So, mission number two, cost code two. Alexei Kurbanov, the first spacewalker. Perform an EVA in orbit and return the Kerbal unharmed. While we are near an 80 kilometer orbit, Kerbal goes outside, lets go of the spaceship, spaceship, grabs it again, gets back inside. Flying around out in space is optional, and it must land in the water or at least on the other side of Kerbin. See? And there we go. Okay. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and use this and build a rocket to get into an 80 kilometer orbit. So we're going to have, you know what? I'm not going to use that. There we go. Um, So without further ado, let's get this rocket in the, oh, I have nobody on board. Uh, Jeb Kerman, there we go. And I may have misjudged the amount of fuel I need for this launch, so we'll see how that goes. We're launching in three, two, one, lift off. All right, so I'm gonna call that close enough. I'm in orbit just around 82,000 kilometers, or 82 kilometers, 82,000 meters, 82,000 kilometers. And next up, I need to get this guy out of the ship, have him let go of the ship, and have him get back in. So, EVA, now I have his perspective. I can hit B to board again, and I can go. Let's take his report, see what he thinks. I have recorded my observations, that's wonderful. All right. Suddenly he is floating free in space. That's a bit scary, so grab back on and get back in the ship. Alrighty, so that is first mission complete. Now I just need to splash down somewhere, um, either in the water or on the other side of the planet. So I'm going to plan to splash down in this ocean somewhere. So let's speed up a little bit. All right, and with my planned landing there, I will either land in the water somewhere or on the opposite side of the continent as per the goal. And now we just wait. Looks like we have a successful mission number two of the Kerbin I program. So what is next? Ed Kerman, the first jet-assisted EVA. In an 80-kilometer orbit, have your Kerbal leave your comfy spacecraft and float around. Must complete one circuit around the craft. EVA must take place entirely on the day side. Otherwise, you have to drift in space until daylight comes back. If you lose the Kerbal and run out of jetpack fuel, your first orbital intercept will be rescue him using a satellite. Well, that's good to know. All right, so I'm going to need to study up on how to use the jetpack because I honestly don't remember what the jetpack control is for. And here we go. Okay, so walk with WASD. Q and E are rotational. 
Oh, that's interesting. You can go counterclockwise. I've never tried that before. Uh, shift up and down, space, F, sprint. Toggle jetpack R. That's what I want. Okay, good to know. So now I know how to how to do an EVA. Let's recover this. And what is this one? Cost god. Nope. Curve and I four. Okay. So. Honestly, this is going to be exactly the same launch. The only difference is when I'm in space, I have to have him fly around the rocket. So, curve and I four. And since this one's honestly going to be the exact same launch again, I will see you guys in space. See you then. All right, guys, I am in an 80 kilometer orbit, as you can see, and I am just coming into the, or coming across the daylight side of the planet. So I have until I get to the other side of the planet to complete in my first spacewalk, or rather the, the first spacewalk where I actually do something. So let's put the ladder somewhere. He'll be able to find it again in the light and go for an EVA. So I have let go. Time to bring out the jetpack. And I can go left and right and forward and backward and down and up. So we need to go. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's how that works. So now I need to go around the, the rocket. Okay. Well, that's not too hard. Let's do a couple. Oh, that's... oops. That's gotta hurt. Okay. I'm gonna call that mission more than completed. Time to get back in and land. Go forward. All right. So now we just need to slow down. All right. Another successful mission. So while that comes down, what do we have next? ComSat 4. Replace a defunct satellite and designate it as debris. So. Oh, to do. Remember, last episode, I believe. I launched three ComSat satellites all into geosynchronous orbit around Kerbin, uh, all the same distance apart. I need to replace the first one and designate it as debris. So, or, or end his mission, but I'll probably just debris. So, this would be a good one to practice orbital intercepts, which I will do. Um, so, Let's go finish up this mission. Mm, excuse me. And then we will launch another ComSat satellite. And catching up with something in its orbit is kind of a tricky thing to do. So it'll be good to get some practice at that because I'm actually going to be doing that, I think, in the next mission. Yeah. If I saw correctly. bring him home so now I just need to load up the old commsat satellite and put it up in orbit so I believe I saved it we've got what do we have okay so there's a bunch of stock ships but the one we want is commsat 1 right here and this is now going to be comsat 4 
So I will get this up into space and when I'm ready for replacing the old one, I will let you guys see how that works. So let's get this launched in three, two, one. And I will see you guys again once I'm in space. All right, guys. So I am now in a comfortable 100 kilometer approximate orbit and I need to replace this commsat right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it as our target and we'll get a couple of different heads up indicators. We get to see our angle of difference, I guess, or the, the difference between the planes that the orbits are on. So I'm gonna need to change my orbit a little bit to match up and we can see um, the apoapsis and periapsis for our target. So when we get over to the ascending node here, I'm going to adjust um, and get that down to zero degrees. All right, so now that we've got our angle at zero, it's time to try to match this up. So da -da -da, where is this now? Comsat one. So if we want to match up with this, am I going even the same direction? Good, I am. That could have been an issue if I wasn't even going the same direction. So let's say we try to speed up right around here. There we go. So here, if we do this, we can see um, the intersections of, of where we'll be versus where um, the satellite will be. So when we hit this point, if we were to do this maneuver, the satellite would be here. Nope, the satellite would be here. And then when we hit this point, the satellite would be all the way down here. So what we want to do is try to get these. Ooh, hey, that's really close. Okay, so right here, the satellite will be right there. And if we adjust this, we can match those up so that we will be very close um, to where the actual satellite is. And then from there, we can fill out our orbit to the size it needs to be <clears throat> and um, meet up with this, this other satellite the rest of the way. So this is actually going to work out really well. Uh, because the burn will be slightly ahead of where we are currently. And there's no way that's actually going to be three seconds, so, yeah. Uh, wait, where are we? Oh, we're right here. Okay, even better. I'm going to guess this is going to be, like, a minute burn, so I'm going to start right now. Oh, 30 seconds. That's actually a lot shorter than I thought. So start it right now. And there you can see our orbit is filling out and we want to get it to 2869 ish. Let's get rid of that. 2847. And yeah, 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 points of intersection and stuff. Okay, so that's good enough for there. Let's fast forward and we'll see our orbit meets up. Perfect. So now but we need to fill out our orbit the rest of the way. So we intersect with its orbit right there, and it matches up with the lines just as we expected. Now we want to get in approximately the same orbit. Okay, so now we have a very similar orbit to ComSat 1, but it's not perfect, and we want to replace ComSat 1 as perfectly as possible. So, what we're going to do 
is we can change this heads up display. There's three options. There's orbit, surface, and now since I am targeting something, I can switch to target. And I will see my speed relative to my target. So what I can do is point myself at the target and fire the thrusters just a little bit. And what that'll do is it will bring my orbit a lot closer to the target, I believe. I should be pointing, where is my target? Does it even show up here? No, but right now I should be pointing at the target. So if we speed up, as we go, we should get closer to the target. Nope. Maybe, oh, never mind. I want to go opposite of the direction. Yeah, this is the way the target is moving. There we go. So if we do that, it brings our orbital pads closer. I want to change it, or I want to get it so there's no difference in our speeds. Oh, hey, if I go go around again, we'll actually be in almost the same place, which is perfect. Okay, so now I want to bring our speed difference uh, down to zero. There we go. <laughs> can I see it? There it is. I can see it. Okay. So I want our difference in speed to be approximately zero. Or nope, I just want to keep getting closer to ComSat 1. And if we move ahead to here, And that will be bringing us closer and closer to it. Okay, so now we want to stop moving relative to it. Why is that? Something isn't right here. Definitely not right here. Oh. Well, that seems to work. Not exactly sure what I just did there. Okay, so we're really close now. Okay, so that, oh, 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 got it, got it. Okay, so that is, duh, that is the opposite direction of my target. This is the direction of my target. This is the direction opposite relative, there we go. So if I fire in this direction, I stop moving relative to the target. Then I wanna start moving towards the target. That will bring our intersections closer together. just passed it. And then I want to stop moving relative to the target. And actually go back a little closer to it. 
At this point, I'm going to jettison that and switch to my thrusters entirely. Because these are going to be very small changes from this point. Okay, so that's forward, that's backwards, that's backwards. There we go. at one right there. You want to point at it and go towards it a little bit. And we would just want to get really close to it. And we want to get down to stationary relative to the target. So we want to get this to zero meters per second if possible. And I'm only going to use half of my RCSs. doesn't quite appear to be possible to get it at exactly zero, but hey, this orbit is pretty much exactly the same as the one that the original CompSat had. So I'm going to call that successful. We've got a zero degree uh, tilt, and now I just need to point towards the Earth surface and... Go point towards the surface, uh, except I want to do that at noon. So we're gonna fast forward a bit here till we're approximately noon over Kerbin. And ooh, we've gotten ahead of Comsat one a bit. Time to adjust a little bit. Catching up with something in orbit is kind of a finicky thing. Um, you kind of just got to play around with it and do your best. But it looks like the orbits. Ooh, keep intersecting here and here, although we are slowly getting a little further away from it. So I'm going to adjust this quick. Go back towards it again. So I'm going to call that good enough. I am technically not traveling relative to it, but I am. That's just going to be a math glitch. Oh well. So to point this, this does not appear to be pointed the right way. Right now, it's pretty close to noon over Kerbin, so something got a little bit screwed up. That's okay. So I will just... Point. Let's see. There we go. Point down at the surface. And activate 
that. Alrighty, so that is comsat number four. And we just designate the other one as debris, and that is the end of that mission. And you know what, over time they'll probably get a little bit off from each other, but that's okay. Yeah, you can see their orbits aren't quite exactly the same, but that's okay. So let's get rid of the debris from that launch. Then take ComSat 1. And it is now debris. All right, that's the end of ComSat number 4. So next up, we're going to have Kerbini 6 and 7 orbital rendezvous. So for this mission... We need to intercept and rendezvous a manned ship to within 100 meters of another manned ship. They must both be identical, carrying a single Kerbal, no docking ports. They must both have RCS thrusters. And with experience comes new technology. I may have the basic SAS module at this point. So, since SAS modules are a thing of the past, I will now be allowing myself to use um, the automatic... Uh, targeting system for the the six basic directions up down left right forward backward uh, until I get to the part where I'm allowed to use the advanced SAS I will not be using the automatic targeting for uh, course navigation plan navigation or um, targeting other objects so What do I need? Just two ships to get into orbit. No particular orbit given, so I'll probably go with 80 kilometers or so. So, let's build this rocket. Um, honestly, this can be very similar to... Where is it? Not boss talk. Oh, did I say? Yeah, cost code two. There we go. So basically, it's going to be the same as this because this was able to get into orbit, except I'm required to have RCS on this. So what do I have for RCS for propellant? I could use a round tank. Or one of these side ones. I think I'll use some of these side tanks. And uh, where did those show up? Command and control? Yeah. Um, some thruster blocks. Four on the bottom. And four up higher. That way we'll be able to get some even maneuverability, hopefully. It'll be a little bit off balance, but... Well, actually, we can check that. If we take this off, that's all we'll have. Center of mass is right about there, which means... Ideally... These thrusters need to be moved up here a bit. But that's not going to work because I've got other stuff up there. So I'm going to leave them here and just deal with it. Okay, this is going to be, what is this, Kerbini 6 and 7. Jebediah Kerman is going to be in this rocket. So I will get these both up in space and uh, bring you guys back as soon as the second one is about to rendezvous with the first one.
Wait, what? Why are we back here? I thought I told you guys I was going to make it into space. Well, turns out adding these two extra fuel tanks makes the rocket quite a bit heavier than I expected, and um, I'm no longer able to make it in orbit with this rocket, so I'm going to extend out... How do I want to do this? <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is make the second stage a little bit longer. Let's see how this works. Uh -huh. Those don't belong there, those belong here. All right. Oh, it'll work. All right. Let's try this one more time. Alright, so now we have two Kerbini rockets in orbit, and uh, since Kerbini 6 has a little bit more fuel left, that's going to be the one hopefully making the rendezvous, because we don't want either one to run out of fuel, that would be not good. So this one needs to fall behind a bit, so I'm going to extend the orbit a tad. And then fast forward a lot. And that will allow the other one to catch up. All right, so now they are in essentially the same location. Let's catch these up to each other. So first up, we point based on the target and get down to a zero speed difference, approximately. Then we point at the target, which, oh, right there, and we need to get within 100 meters. Okay. go, Kerbin I-6 and Kerbin I-7 right up next to each other. Oh, 
All right. Now we just gotta land these two. Might be a little difficult because Kerbin I-6 is pretty low on fuel right now. Hopefully the RCS thrusters will suffice in getting out of orbit. So. Let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, that should definitely fall out of orbit. Oh, wonderful. So now that Kerbin I-6 is home, time to bring home Kerbin I-7. Piloted by Bill Kerman. He didn't even have to do anything. He just kind of sat here in the other ship rendezvoused with him. Oh well, maybe next time, Bill. All right, so while this one splashes down, let's take a look at what we got next. Curb and I eight, Neil and the Kerbina target vehicle. So we must launch an unmanned target vehicle with a docking port. And we must launch a manned single Kerbal vehicle with a docking port. And we must dock them, transfer fuel from the target to the ship, and make sure that both ships can deorbit. However, I guess I don't have to deorbit the target vehicle. So, let's take a look. I think... Well, the target vehicle is not going to be difficult to build at all. Um, let's see, do I have a different satellite I can just use? Curb sat. Oh, that one even already has a <laughs> tad bit expensive though. I think I will try to build this one out of scratch. So we got the head. Then we're going to have And finally, we need our docking port. So, since we're only transferring fuel and not Kerbals, I can use a small docking port. Oh, except the small one is much more expensive than the normal one. So, we will go with the normal Clampotron docking port. How heavy are these? very heavy at all. I think if I put on just one, I won't have to worry about weight issues. I will see you guys when this thing is in space. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, let's launch this thing. Three, two, one.
So as you can see, here I am in space. I haven't even needed to use any fuel from this fuel tank. So I overdid it on the fuel just a little bit. So when I launch up the uh, rendezvous vehicle, I think I'll cut off just a little bit of fuel. But this way I'll have something left to transfer to that one. So what is the difference going to be? Well, honestly, the only difference is I'm going to cut those fuel tanks in half. And then this whole thing will come off and get put on the lift off. Alright, so I have my intercept vehicle in orbit, ready to catch up with the target. I'm currently right here, and the target vehicle is this right there. I have it set as my target object. Um, I have my orbit set a bit smaller, so that I will be able to catch up to it. So, we just kind of got to fast forward a bit. Um, so I'll be switching over to the Space Center here, and the tracking station. Okay, so we are watching there and there, and let's get rid of this debris, because I don't want that to be an issue later. Okay. So now we just need to catch up to the target and dock. And docking sounds like a really scary thing to try to do, but it's actually not that bad. Um, basically how docking works is uh, you get the two docking ports really close to each other and then they'll kind of suck themselves together. So we can see there's the two docking ports, kind of just get them close to each other and dock. Well, that looks really nice. Cool. All right, so we have two docked ships, and now if we want to transfer, transfer fuel, uh, how do we do this? Oh, nope, don't want to do controls. Um, I know there's a way to transfer fuel here. Nope, oh, there we go. Okay. So, we want to do out and out. There, okay, so we have refueled this engine and this one has barely any fuel left. So now we will undock them, and I'm actually going to switch vehicles here, and we're just going to send this target vehicle crashing down to the planet. So which way do I have to fire to do that? from there and fire 
the engines. Alright, so that will come crashing down. And meanwhile, we will land Kerbini 8 safely. Oh, wait, we don't want to go in relation to the target, we want to go in relation to orbit. There we go. Alright, so what do we have for the final mission? Two Kerbals, two ships, and a party. Transfer crew with another spaceship in orbit while docked. So, transfer one Kerbal from one ship with one Kerbal from another via a docking port, and then go back via EVA. And transfer fuel so both ships have equal amounts for the return. And return one Kerbal to his ship via EVA. So, in order to do this, we need to use a two-seater command pod so that there's an empty seat. Well, there is no two-seater command pods, but there are one-seater command pods, and there are extra command pods. So I will probably throw an extra command or an extra seat on this uh, rocket that I used for the target vehicle, actually, because it's going to be heavier now, and I'm going to need that extra fuel. So we're going to open up that model, that was the, uh, I don't have it, I will use Kerbin I-8 and modify that. So I have a few options here. I could use this command pod, but that's a lot bigger and requires, requires a lot of redesign. Instead, I think I'm just going to add this, an inline cockpit, even though that's technically meant for sh planes, uh, I think it'll work fine. So that's going to be, actually we can put that on the bottom part because while it will have someone in it, it won't while we're taking off or landing. So if we have to jettison it and let it crash, that will be okay. But we want to have it opposite side of the docking port for ease of access to the docking port. So then uh, we'll want to put some more fuel on here. Let's see. There we go. Another small fuel tank right on there. Okay, so that's going to be what I'm going to call these Kerbin I-9 and Kerbin I-10. And let's see, our center of gravity on the top part is going to be all different now, which means I can move these to my liking. Okay. Alright guys, so here we are looking at Kerbin I-10 in orbit around Kerbin, and Kerbin I-9 is just a bit ahead, and uh, that is the target here, is to get them to rendezvous. So I made the orbit for 10 quite a bit smaller than for 9, or yeah, for, yeah than for 9, uh, in the hopes that we'll be able to um, catch it up fairly quickly. So 
we are estimated to meet up right here. Perfect. And then I think I'm going to switch back to 9 because there's a bit more fuel on that ship and I want to be able to have them both be able to successfully land. So we're going to extend out the orbit here so that they match approximately and then switch back to 9. So if we set 10 as the target here, oh wow, it's really close by. That worked out really well. All right, we're just gonna go. So I shut down the engine because one of the controls for this um, system here is shift. And I didn't want to accidentally fire up the engine. And we have a dock. Hopefully. There we go. We have a dock. Alright, so now the two ships are connected as one. And as per instructions, we need to transfer one from one ship via a docking port and then go back via EVA. So, we're going to take Valentina Kerman and move her... Well, we're actually we're gonna move whoever's in the other one. So we gotta find the door and choose the crew hatch. And we're going to transfer Jeb Kerman into that command pod. All right, and it looks, I'm guessing Valentina Kerman is in this one. Yes. So then we're going to move Jeb back via an EVA. So he's gonna just let go, and we are gonna fly him back to his ship. <laughs> All right, and we're actually gonna move Valentina, oopsie. We're gonna move her up to the front of her ship, because that's where she should have been from the beginning. And then we gotta make sure there's enough fuel in both of them for the return. So, ah, that's how that works. Okay, so this one has much more fuel in it. So we're gonna try to balance them out here. Oh, that didn't work. All right, that's about even. And you should both have about 30. So that's approximately even in both of them. And now we're just going to detach. And which ship is this? This is that one. All right, we are going to re-enable this engine and slowly move away so we don't destroy that ship and then we're gonna bring it back down to the planet and there is nobody there so we can jettison this safely
after the completion of the Kirvanite program, Robert Kirvin retired to much fanfare and settled down to write books about the early pioneers of Kerbal spaceflight, who he helped put into space. A new director, Gene Kirvin, arrived to take his place at the Kerbal Space Center. After the Kerban family reunion, which took place in orbit during the program, Gene ordered the Kerbinaut Corps to take a well-deserved vacation while the space program ramped up for its final preparations for a moonshot. While on vacation, Jebediah took the initiative in his hometown of Kernicopia to fund a new startup company, Jebediah Kerman's Junkyard and Spaceship Parts Incorporated. Cobbled together from a number of junkyard parts he had laying around from his daredevil days. Being an insider, he figured he'd be able to score a number of contracts with the Kerbal Space Program. While he prepared his company, Gene Kerman stepped up missions to send probes and rovers to the moon. See you guys next time for probes and rovers.